Well, there are so many parts gone into this so far, so stay tuned and all will be revealed. Well, good morning everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly. Now, in this video, I am going to be working on this area down here, or start it anyway. Um, but before we go there, I just want to show you something. I did say there would be something to complete the scene. And yes, as you can see, I have now made a tram. Let's go and take a closer look. Hang on a minute. That's not the tram we've just been looking at. And well observed, it's not. But this was my original inspiration for making the tram. Uh, because you cannot buy an N-gauge modern bus unless you want a coach or one of the new London buses, the double deckers, like the old Route Masters, but the modern version. You can't buy anything like an Evo 2 or an Evo 4 or anything remotely like this, and especially not in stagecoach livery. Why? I don't know, because it's available in double O. So I had to make this from cardboard, and that's what I thought I'd have to do with the tram. Now, for those of you who are interested, there are many nets, like a cardboard net where you fold bits down, you've got the top, you fold the sides down, available of all different buses um, from Paper Bus Company. Um, now, I did try and search that the other day and I couldn't find it again, but if you type in Paper Bus, you'll get loads come up. And just to give you an indication before I show you the tram, you'll notice that the windows are slightly recessed and that's because I printed two, cut the outer windows out on the outer skin and then mounted the inner version inside, which then gives you the, the windows. Gloss or varnish it as much as you like, give it a bit of strength inside, hey presto, there it's done. And I have mounted this on some quite thick card so that the wheels don't collapse underneath themselves. Okay, right, onto the tram. Now, I don't want to spend too long showing you this, but at the end of the day, I do want to give it some time. Now, as I said, I was going to make it out of card, but with all the shape at the end and the images that were available, um, it became very difficult to know exactly how to go about it. Um, so I thought I'll try again with the idea of 3D printing. Um, because the end was going to be the problem with that because there's so many angles and shapes and all the rest of it. But actual fact, it turned out the lesser of two evils and it worked out that I got the shape relatively quickly. So what I did then, from the images I found online, I then made these transfers and I had to add certain bits. So looking at pictures of the real thing, I had to add these yellow lines, um, add the word Metrolink, uh, move the numbers which were in the wrong place so it's a little bit of fiddling about but hopefully you can see that it's more or less there so the actual um, build itself I made in seven parts you might be thinking well that's quite a few but actual fact the ends are pretty much the same apart from the roof detail where the pantograph is it's exactly the same both ends it's not exact, but to be honest with you, I'm not that worried. It's a, it's a representation. So it's those two pieces. The middle bit, which is the corridor connection, that was a third piece. And then actually six pieces. And then I'm, I downloaded some bogies from Thingiverse, squashed them down to two millimetres and just printed them off with the idea you're not going to notice them anyway. It just literally just lifts the tram off the ground. So I'm quite pleased with that. And um, I think it does complete the scene. So let's crack on with the rest of Sheffield Street. Right, welcome back. Now, as I said in the last video, I'm going to remove this piece. And the reason for that is because I wanted to create some depth. Now, underneath here, you'll if you looked at Google Maps, you'll notice there is there's a, an underground car park in part and it's a bit like a rubbish dump in other bits of it, to be honest with you. Um, just crates and boxes and tubs and all sorts just dumped down there. And there seems to be a series of tunnels running underneath the station. So 
at the back here, there's going to be some representation of arch tunnels running all the way down, smaller at this end, and they get bigger as they go further down, or the, the same, the, they're bigger than these ones, there's two sizes. And then at the front here, there are a number of columns with a girder bridge and then more wall, which runs along the top. The car park will literally just come out a little bit there, all right? Um, when it gets to around about here, it juts out a bit further, and so again, is more car park. So let's crack on with the arch wall at the back. Right, so let's make a start then. So you can see I'm working on the arches that run along the back wall, and what we've got are a number of small arches inside the bigger arch. Now these are just um, plated over at the back, so when I come to put a backing piece on that, you can see there's three layers there. I'm just gonna put some steel plate image under the back and that will give the impression that there's going to be, um, it's just all boarded up as such. And then you might be thinking, well, why have I cut those short? Well, because they've actually got columns in there, so I've 3D printed those. It does look a bit of a mess at the minute, but all this will be covered in brick paper. And then I'll show you what I do, but I'll fold it back. So I'll cut it so that I just cover it as it is, cut through it and then just fold the bits back over themselves. I'll show you that when I get that far. All of these bits here are just gonna be cut right through. So it's effectively a double thickness arch, except to this layer where there'll be an image. Okay, so let's crack on. Right, welcome back. Now, I have been asked to do a brief demo of Publisher. I do use Publisher on the computer, on the laptop, purely because I've got Office and it's convenient. It's a bit clunky. It's not the most fluid of programs. I do use Affinity Designer on the iPad, which is a lot better, but because it's on an iPad, it's a bit awkward to use anyway, because it's a bit on the small side. So, but here we go. Anyway, so there's my file. I've just downloaded this from Scale Scenes and I'm after this bit. So what I'm gonna do is take that up to about the middle and I'm going to press print screen, which will then um, copy the whole of that screen. Uh, so I'm going to go to that page there. And yeah, right, so I'm now going to paste it in like that. So what I what I want to do is crop that out. Now you have to go to pitch format, which is at the top here. And crop is just there, crop. And you get these uh, little black, thick black lines come up. So I'm gonna crop that out like so. And now I want to make that a bit smaller so I can do that, bring it across, and I'm going to copy that. I've just pressed the right mouse button, copy, right mouse button, and paste. And I'm just going to place them side by side, like that. And keep doing that, like so. Now, what I might do, otherwise you end, um, is flip that one, because otherwise you'll end up with the same pattern appearing. So I'm going to go to rotate and flip and it just makes it a little bit different. Now nudge that up. Uh, you do nudging by using the arrow keys. Um, you might also want to know about putting something forward and back. So again, it's all in the picture format menu. That is your best friend when you're doing pictures. If you click on it, um, you've got send forward, send back just there. You've got the crop icon just there. Group is that one. Ungroup is that one. Um, so if you select all those together, you know, you can just click group and that does help. Um, you can change and flip the colors. So you can go to recolor there and you've got lots of different variants at that point and you can go to corrections, which is more to do with the brightness and the contrast. Another thing you can do is if we want it different size, you can just move the tabs in and out like that, or you can bring them in, resize them, all that sort of stuff. 
Okay, so I hope that uh, is helpful. Um, I probably won't do any more than that now, um, but if you do require any more specific um, help or support, just please just put it in the comments or message me on Facebook and I'll see what I can do for you. Okay, thanks. Sir. Well, there you go. There you can see I've put the paper on one of the pieces now. So hopefully you can see what I mean now. So I'm going to wrap that around um, the two layers. So obviously I've got to cut the arches into that one. And then I shall glue those two together and then wrap the paper around both of those. And then once that's all glued and solid, then I shall glue it to that with the surface papers on. Okay, so the ones that give the impression of what's going on behind the tunnels. I'll show you shortly. Welcome back. I have gone ahead a little bit and done some more. So you can see that section there is almost finished. I've got, there's a girder which runs just up here, stops around about there. So I've got to put that on, but as you can see, I've built this up now. Um, somebody did make a comment about, um, I was using card, um, and you can see in the room, if I back out the door, I'm not into the vacuum cleaner, you can see you come in the doorway I'll even come back a bit more there's the vacuum cleaner there you can see the door frame there so as you come in the door you would automatically turn left you wouldn't necessarily go straight on so that should be all right in terms of placement and but i have screwed this batten to the woodwork but because there's a thin piece of plywood underneath there i couldn't screw that in and i hadn't unfortunately got any um, bolts with nuts um, and I'm not going to buy any for just that little bit, to be honest with you. But you might remember I used these strips um, on the double O gauge layouts and they seem perfect for this. So that's given it a bit of strength. I might put some card underneath that and hot glue that in just to strengthen that up a little bit even more. And then over the top, there's going to be a thin skin of uh, one millimetre, which will give me the road surface and then I'll build up the path another one millimetre on top of that. I probably will have to raise this slightly so it comes in as a slight bank, but that's no problem, is it? So I've now what I've got to do now is I'm working on pillars which run all the way down here. And then, as I said, there's a piece that juts out and runs down the side here. So again, there will be some more pillars there. So the printer is just going mad at the moment making pillars um, because they all have to be made in half. So there are 40 <laughs> to make and I'm just over halfway now, uh, but I will get there and then I will, I will create the rafters that go in down here. I do want to make it as close as I possibly can. It's not authentic because this is, there's far more of these sections. There's probably about five or six of this section. And there's well probably 20 of these but so it's just a representation isn't it at the end of the day okay i'll get a bit more done and i'll show you later right so as you can see there's a few more changes now so obviously i've got the road surface in and it is painted i normally do do the surface a lot more wild and varied than that but looking at google maps the, the tarmac does look to be reasonably fresh so i've kept it a fairly even color so and there will be some double yellow lines and white lines going along that maybe some words as two um, this bank has been modified and see so, and the path has been put in as well so you can see the general shapes of that still need to static grass that it's just got basic flock on it and I also need to surface this path as well but that will be done so the road will come around here like that and then curve out going into Bode Street, I think it's Bode Street going up this way, okay? So now let's think about the upper surface, which is now going to extend the car park out. Now that piece there is literally just a temporary um, thing to hold the upper level up. But as you can see, the car park on the top is gonna to get considerably bigger. Um, there's going to be columns which come down here, and then there's a brick structure and obviously the entrance to the car park there. There's another brick structure here, and I think there's arches all the way down to the end, which will mimic what's behind, okay? So it's taken quite a while to get to this point. In other words, where I can actually 
put these points here and create the angle. It isn't quite the right angle, but it's the best that I can get it for the size and the shape I've got. Um, so all this here would have to be completely reconfigured uh, because there are parking spaces which go the other way. And then this row of car parking spaces will come back. And then there's another row of car parking spaces coming down here, probably to about there. Um, and some more coming back this way. And obviously the road will just continue. I think it turns around the corner as well, but we'll have a look at that a bit nearer the time. So you can see it's quite an involved project, really. It, it started off being quite simple, but it's getting more and more complex as time goes on. So I'll crack on with it and I'll show you a bit more shortly. Right, I've done about as much as I possibly can do this week. So let's go and take a look. So going down Sheffield Street. I haven't done anything to the grass bank since you saw it last, but we've now got all the pillars are now in. And also these two brick structures, these three brick structures, there's another one at the end there, I'll tell you about that in a minute. And also the start of the roof. So you've got this red understructure and there's a bit exposed there. This um, this piece is literally just come off the printer, so that's why it's not painted. And so I need to make another one of those to go there. And there's a triangle piece printing for this bar. But you can see now that they're all sort of ribbed, if you like. I've tried to replicate exactly what's in the station roof. So that goes down to there. And as I said, there's this, uh, I've put a brick structure in down there. I don't know whether that's right or not. I can't see. Um, it's very difficult to get uh, 3D images through Google Maps to go down there. I can see a top down view, but I can't see sideways. So I'm guessing that. Um, but there's another building here, Ofsted. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm definitely not going to be putting them in the model um, and there's obviously a car park here I'll show you the bridge in a minute I have made that uh, but let's go down a bit lower now and I'll show you what it's like and sorry there is a bit of glare coming in but you can see now that back part there is plated up and as I go down you can see that that one's got like a top section which is plated and then the rest is bricked up but you've also got this like girder running down the length of that section and it's got some trunking on the side or pipe i'm not sure quite what it is i think it's trunking probably got electrical cables inside it and there's little brackets on the wall there you could probably make those out oops moving that across so they are coming now these brick structures, they were made from a piece of two mil grey board and literally just stuck together. I had to cut this end piece at an angle and then I had to go in with a scalpel and try and chop that out. But you can see that these two are fairly standard and just three pieces glued together and then wrapped in a paper brick. So it's definitely getting there. Right, nearly forgot. So we've got that bridge which comes across here now. I'll just show you the underside of that. I've tried to replicate that as as best I can from again from Google Maps. Um, it's sitting at a funny angle at the moment, so obviously it needs to be either shortened, these posts need to be shortened a bit, or drilled into the baseboard. There is the road sort of continues around and then comes around like that's quite a sharp corner there as it goes into Bow Street yeah and there is an entrance into the station car park through this um, entrance here so there will be um, a concrete well for want of a better word lintel but it's actually more of a wall and there is a girder running across this part here as well so it's it's definitely getting there and obviously another girder going down the side there as well so it's getting there bit by bit by bit i'll just give you a, a view down sheffield street so 
So there we are. I hope you've enjoyed that um, on this uh, first instalment of that end section. So join me again for the next bit here on Piccadilly. Take care of yourself out. Bye for now. <laughs>